Hi, I'm Susie. I'm an instructor in the biology department of a local college, and I've been an educator here at Tyler Arboretum. And I went into biology because I've always loved to be outside and explore what I could find in the leaf litter. I love to watch insects as they came to flowers, going into the streams and turning over rocks, watching the birds as they fly around and catch insects. And one of the things I really love to do is to find a log and see what's underneath. You might be wondering what could be so interesting about a dead log. Well, it's not so dead. There's a whole community of animals, plants, and fungi that live inside and underneath and on top of these dead logs. They're living here because they can feed off of the log as well as use it as a temporary shelter on their way somewhere else or a long-term shelter, a nursery to raise their young. Just like you live in a house that keeps you comfortable and safe, they do the same thing with the log. It can keep them warmer in the winter, provide a cool, moist place in the summertime. And this community is providing a really important service for the forest. They're breaking down all of this plant matter that's in the log and leaves and sticks that you find all over the floor of the forest as well as what animals may leave behind. Animal poop, or when animals die, all of that needs to be broken down and all of the nutrients in it return to the soil so that the plants that you see growing now can use those nutrients. Some of the animals that come by are looking to find a meal for themselves, not from the log itself, but from the other animals that are eating it. For example, this spider that's inside of the crack on this log. So when you found a suitable log, you want to find one that's not too big so that you can turn it over easily enough. You want to follow good log rolling etiquette. You want to remember that this is somebody's home and so we want to be mindful of not disturbing them too much as we take a look. So first of all, you want to roll the log towards yourself just in case there's somebody a little larger who might need to escape, so you're giving them an out. So you want to roll the log slowly and carefully towards you. And see what we see underneath. Here is a salamander that's using this log as a cool, moist place. These are amphibians, so they have to keep their skin somewhat wet. And then underneath a log is a perfect place, as well as they can find things to eat under here because they eat small insects. You can see a lot of holes in the log. There are probably beetles that have burrowed into this log. Now there's a lot of frass over here, which is insect poop. So somebody's been eating over here. There's some ants down at this end. You can see a lot of roots from the plants that are growing nearby. So the roots are growing into where they can get good nutrients from the decaying log. There's a pill bug. Whoops. Another tritivore. You'll find these in the leaf litter a lot. Here's a plant sprout. Okay, and when you're ready to roll the log back, any animals that you have taken out, in order to make sure you don't crush them, the best thing to do is to pick them up, roll your log back, and then put them down next to it so that they can crawl back into a space that's the right size for them. I'm seeing a mite. All right, 
so now that we're done, we're just going to very gently and slowly roll our log back over so that we don't crush any of the animals. We put the roof back on their home and put the moist side down right as we found it. What we have here is a slug. A slug is a kind of mollusk, which means it's related to clams and oysters and snails. It's basically a shellless snail. But if we were to open up its back right here, we would actually find a little sliver of shell inside. That's basically all the shell that it has. The reason a slug is so slimy is that's the way it can move. So on its underside it has a whole bunch of little tiny hairs that when it wiggles them it helps it to glide along but it can only glide along in some kind of liquid so it makes its own slime in order to glide along in in its little slime trail so that's why you'll see this gooey slime trail behind wherever a, a, a slug goes it's also why a log like this is a great place for a slug because they'll lose a lot of water if they're out where it's too hot. Underneath the log where it's very moist is a great place for a slug. Okay, under this log we're finding another ant colony and this one has brood and you can see them carrying it around in their mouths taking very good care of them. Now that I've opened this up, they want to find a safer place to keep their brood. The brood are the brood are eggs, larvae, and pupae, and they're white, and they won't have the brown color until they emerge from the pupal stage as adults. It looks like they're going a little further into this decaying log. of them under here. It's very hard to find the queen. They keep her very, very safe. If the queen dies, the entire colony dies. So she's very precious. Sometimes you'll see ants that are slightly different sizes in the same colony. And we call those casts. They'll be very small casts, larger casts, and the size that they are is their final size. They just emerge either as a small ant or a larger ant, depending on what they do for the colony. Small ants might stay in the colony, taking care of the brood. Larger individuals are the ones that'll go out and find food. their roof back on top of them. So the next time you're outside, walking around in the forest, or in a park, or even in your own backyard, or here on Dismal Run at Tyler Arboretum, remember to look at those logs for the important role they play in the forest community. Go ahead and explore in the forest. Turn over one of those logs. See who you can find eating it, living underneath it, living on top of it. The most important thing is to get outside and explore the world you live in.